This oversized book of fairy tales from around the world is just one of the many props that's located here inside the fairy tale museum of Nicosia in Cyprus. Hi, I'm Matt and this is another edition of Borders on Budgets. Today we will step inside this dreamlike building and see what is stirring. inside the large cabinet. Oh, you can see now. Oh. This is the magic mirror of the queen. When he asked him, uh, mirror, mirror, who is the most beautiful woman in the world? He used to say, you, my queen. As we enter the fairy tale museum, there appears to be a large bookshelf. What does this mean? Each book on this bookshelf represents a great storyteller or other people who have read loads of stories and studied a lot about stories and folk tales. So what are some of the features of the fairy tale museum kitchen? Yes. What makes this a special place to prepare food? This is a special place to make cookies with the children and uh, make uh, different recipes with them. We are inspiring from the fairy tales and we are making uh, very uh, good things here. And so where does take me, eat me, drink me? Where does that come from? They come from the story of Alice in Wonderland, the famous tale from Lewis Carroll. And all of the spoons as door handles. How, uh, how did you come about with the idea of the spoons as door handles? We wanted here to be a magic place uh, when somebody come here to imagine Alice in Wonderland. So here we have the spoons and here we have the, the teacups. What is the most popular? The most popular one is Spanos and the, and the 40 dragons. Spanos in Greek means the man who had no hair, like facial hair or hair on his um, hands or his legs. He was very, very thin, but he was very, very strong at heart. It's very clever. No corner of the fairy tale museum is without its story itself or with other props. There, for example, Rapunzel's hair. Books and a wedding dress on the ceiling. And in keeping with Cypriot fairy tale tradition, a dragon. Oh wait, no, that's Jack and the Beanstalk's beanstalk. I used to use uh, fairy tales in our clinical work with clients, children and adults. We believe that uh, all the folk tales have inside a deeper meaning about life, about love, about the difficulties of the life. So we use them in the clinical work and uh, the people, the clients, uh, with a symbolic way, they can uh, touch their uh, deeper uh, things and things. As with many places in Nicosia's old city, the fairy tale museum is only meters away from the United Nations buffer zone, separating Greek Cyprus from Turkish Cyprus. Of all the Cypriot fairy tales, perhaps the biggest one is the fact that North Cyprus is a country recognized only by one other country, that being Turkey. However, enough about the politics of the island, let's go back inside for real fairy tales. When we saw this small, small garden with this big, big lemon tree, we loved the house. This is a very, very old lemon tree, and as you can see, it's full of lemons. Uh, this is, uh, when somebody comes here in the museum, when they see this lemon tree, 
they loved all the museum for this lemon tree. It's very, very magical. <laughs> so what is one example of a fairy tale with the lemon tree? Um, it is an old fairy tale about three queens. They're trying to find uh, something and uh, they have a lot of difficulties in their way and they meet a lemon tree and uh, they can have three lemons with three wishes. It's a magical and very beautiful fairy tale. Very, very old. Like this tree. In addition to the fairy tale museum, the building is also used for drama classes and other arts related programs. Well, this is to, uh, to conclude uh, our visit to the fairy tale museum of Nicosia in Cyprus. Uh, I want to thank Vicky and Despo for their, for their participation. We thank you very much, Matt, for coming here in our museum. And I also want to thank them for the cloak because it won't be too often that I'll be able to do this for a clo closing and it certainly beats the usual plaid. Also, I wanted a taste of the lemonade which actually is made from the lemons. Uh, so yeah. here we go. Let's see what it, well, let's see what it has. Mmm. Oh, oh, that's lovely. That's perfect. So, on behalf of Borders on Budgets, a reminder, Borders on Budgets, long distance hikes, slices of life, not a lot of money. I thank you for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode.